We good? Okay. Uh, my name is Jacob Harrington. I'm a software engineer at a startup in Fayetteville, Arkansas, so just a little bit away from here. My talk is called My Heroes Are Imposters Too. Um, if you're interested in this stuff, I have a podcast, probably the best place on the internet to learn more about me. That's devpath.fm. So um, I am a senior software engineer uh, at a company called Engine. We build an e-commerce platform. I'm a core team member on the Solidus project, which if you're in the Ruby world or the e-commerce world, you may have heard of Spree. It's kind of the sister project for Spree. Um, and I run a podcast, like I said, and I'm pretty sure that I'm an imposter. Generally speaking, I feel like I am. Right now, I feel like I am. Um, so a little bit about that. I, I want to I get a show of hands. Who has heard of imposter syndrome? It's most of the tech industry. Cool. So put your hand up if you think you felt imposter syndrome. Again, most of the tech industry. So that's, uh, that's something you should feel some solidarity uh, in that. But about me and why I felt imposter syndrome in my life, I'm a self-taught engineer. Uh, I've only been doing this for like two years. I have that cool word senior in front of my job title. Uh, and I only have two years of experience. That's a ton of fuel for imposter syndrome. I don't feel qualified for that. Um, and the first year that I did software engineering was one of the most terrible years of my life. Uh, I got hired onto a really, really high performing cool team uh, and I was not on par with them. And I spent a year at that job, which that team experienced extreme turnover. It went from uh, somewhere around like 15 people to somewhere around like six people uh, in the year that I was there. Uh, and I really, I really didn't ever mesh with that team. I would go to work, I would have panic attacks in the parking lot. Uh, I was afraid I would be fired literally every day. I had this sensation in my head that I didn't belong there and that I was gonna be ousted and revealed to not be capable or competent uh, enough to do my job. Basically every day I felt that. So before I go into it any further, I wanna show you guys a definition of imposter syndrome and there's some important things from this. So this is from Wikipedia, it says, imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. So really important things are in red. Uh, it's a pattern and it's a persistent internalized fear. It's something you feel a lot and it's something that's internalized, like you are convinced of this, that you are going to be exposed as a fraud. The public exposure, people in mass are gonna find out that you are lying. Um, I felt this that whole first year. I would say that I went to work every day and thought I was fooling people. Um, I really did. And that was such a harrowing experience for me. And this is an eight minute talk, so I won't talk about why I didn't mesh with that team. There's a lot of reasons and about half of them are my fault. Uh, it was, it was so traumatic for me that it led me to actually seek out people I would call heroes in my life, uh, engineers that are very successful, and ask them this question. Um, this is, this is kind of what I heard. So this is Avdi Grimm. Avdi, if you're in the Ruby world, you know who he is. Um, he's one of the most prolific Ruby developers to ever talk on the internet. He's a keynote speaker all the time and an author. And this is what he said when I asked him. Uh, that, that was a, a long roundabout way of saying, you know, sometimes Sometimes you kind of are a fraud until you're not. You know, you just sign, kind of decide I'm going to, uh, I'm going to set myself up as this thing, and I'm going to become the thing by doing that. So right before he said that, Avdi had described a situation he found himself in one year at RailsConf. He lost his primary source of income first day of RailsConf, and he had a growing family. He found out like that day that he was no longer employed by those people. Um, so he went to RailsConf and he glued a bunch of telephones to a helmet that he wore and walked around RailsConf and told everyone he was an expert on remote work. Uh, he had never had a remote job. And by the end of RailsConf, he had a new gig that paid him more, and it was remote. So his advice was basically to lean into that feeling, uh, be comfortable with the fear of being exposed as a fraud, and it worked out really well for him. This is uh, Ben Oligbadu. Ben's a Microsoft MVP. He's a principal engineer at Eventbrite, and he has a master's and bachelor's degree in CS from Stanford. He's not someone I would think has imposter syndrome, but this is what he said. So funny enough, I didn't have imposter syndrome until I left my first job and came to Eventbrite because mm. I was at my first job for almost nine years. So Ben almost spent a decade at a company called Zazzle doing software engineering there, and he got hired to a senior leadership position at Eventbrite, and day one, uh, he has this thought, maybe I was only good at this because I was at this one company and maybe I don't actually know how to do this as a career, I just know how to work at that one company. So he showed up day one with the fear that he was gonna be ousted by people uh, revealing that he wasn't capable of doing that job. This is Emma. Uh, Emma has basically defined the role of UX engineer. Um, she's got a huge following online, and a lot of people care about her opinion, and this is what she said when I asked her about imposter syndrome. Every day, um, and people ask me too, how can you get rid of it? 
And honestly, you can't. Um, you just get better at managing it. So Emma's not just defining the job she does. She's defining the field she works in. If you Google UX engineer, you're going to find a blog post by her titled, What is UX Engineering? Um, this is a person that, again, defines the field she works in. And every day, she says, she feels like she is lying to people and not capable of doing her job. This is Steve Glabnick. He's my nerd crush. Some of you guys work at Mozilla. Some of you guys know who he is. He used to be a really big deal in the Ruby community, and he went on to become a really big deal in the Rust and WebAssembly communities. Um, I asked Steve about imposter syndrome, and this is what he said. Yeah, it definitely is something that um, I have struggled with at various times, and a lot of that has to do with um, basically like crappy people online. Like I don't feel that way very often about myself, but uh, I spend a lot of time on the internet, and there's a lot of people who say a lot of garbage things, and so. Um, especially when I came to Rust, it's like a lower level programming language and Ruby is a very high level programming language. And so there were a lot of people who were like, oh, if a Ruby person is on the Rust core team, the Rust language can't be low level because you know, like Ruby people are stupid. So this is a guy who literally wrote, like in the most literal way possible, wrote the book on Rust. And he had this fear that other people on the internet were gonna oust him as not being intelligent enough to be on the Rust core team. This is Kent. Uh, if you are in the React world, you've probably encountered some of Kent's content. Uh, he has a lot of impact on the way that framework goes because he has a large following. He also produces a huge amount of side projects. And this is what he said. And I felt like they're going to find me out and they're going to fire me um, because I'm not doing anything useful for this company. So Kent was describing his first job as a software engineer. Uh, basically just felt like he wasn't productive enough, and as a result, people were going to realize he wasn't capable of being a software engineer and get rid of him. These people are highly paid consultants, open source maintainers, keynote speakers, authors, influencers, and there's also a Docker captain and a Ruby hero up there. And all of them have given me a first-hand account of their own experiences with imposter syndrome. Uh, on my podcast, 100% of the people I've interviewed have admitted to feeling imposter syndrome, and some of these people on the screen uh, probably felt it today. So uh, if, you're, if you're feeling imposter syndrome, you're in good company. So that begs the question, how do I solve this thing I'm feeling? Uh, it's not curable. You're, you're not gonna be able to cure your imposter syndrome. Uh, if you're like most of us, you're gonna feel over your head at some point, and you're gonna be afraid people are gonna find out and oust you. Uh, but what you can do is you can rise to the challenge of acknowledging that you're feeling it. You can be honest about it, and you can talk to people about it, and what that will do is, one, mitigate the risk of people finding out that you're feeling it because you've told them, uh, and it will help other people to feel more normal when they feel it. So what I'm trying to do is communicate that I'm not unique in feeling imposter syndrome, um, and that my heroes were honest with me and told me they, were, they felt it too, and hopefully that normalizes a little bit, and people who are feeling it will realize they're not alone. So that's pretty much all I have. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, hopefully you got something out of that or got interested and hopefully planted a seed of hope for anyone who's feeling that stuff. Um, if you want to find out more about this, I, like I said, I have a podcast. I don't want to shamelessly plug that, but that's pretty much what it's about. Also, my company's hiring. Cool. Oh. You can ask me anything. Okay. Um, so I have always been kind of skeptical of this idea of imposter syndrome. So my question to you is, um, how by identifying yourself as someone who has imposter syndrome yeah. and creating this identity that you now have, do you, do you think it, it can be used as a security blank, blanket or an excuse? Like, sure. Can you um, maybe describe more about your definition of imposter syndrome? Yeah. Yeah, great point. Um, so I would say, first off, I don't really feel imposter syndrome in my job anymore. I do on the stage, because I've never done this before. But in my job, I don't. Um, I feel pretty comfortable telling people what I don't know. The thing about imposter syndrome, if I go back to that slide, it's really important that people understand, in my opinion, is uh, it's a pattern of internalized fear that you feel frequently that others are going to expose you as a fraud. It's not like, oh, I feel like I can't do my job. It's like, I am lying to people and someone's going to tell everyone else that I am lying to people, and they're going to know it's true. 
that's like the feeling of imposter syndrome, which is different. Actually, Audley talks a lot about teasing apart the ideas of anxiety and imposter syndrome, and like it's a good point. Um, I do think it's over applied, but I think a lot of people feel it, and I think it's a very real thing. And the only way to get better about it is just to say, I'm feeling this right now. And what you'll realize is most of the other people in the room are feeling it too. Thank you. Yeah. Bring it up. 